Vibrational motion in diatomics can be fairly reasonably approximated by a harmonic oscillator. Um, and the harmonic oscillator has a potential that's a Hooke's law potential, which is given by this, as we talked about. And the kinetic energy operator in the coordinate system, um, where r is the distance between the two masses, um, is given by minus h bar squared over 2 mu, where mu is the reduced mass, times the second derivative of r, um, second derivative of the wave function with respect to r, as we showed in the last video. So this potential, you can see, is parabolic, and it's centered at r equals 0. So we have this parabolic potential, and the problem that we want to solve is um, minus h bar squared over 2 mu d squared psi dr squared plus 1 half k r squared times psi is equal to e times psi. So we're looking for all the solutions to this eigenvalue problem. Before we start actually solving the problem mathematically, let's think a little bit about what we expect to find. So notice that in this system, as my particle stretches and goes, gets restored back and stretches and restores back and stretches and restores back, it's confined to be um, at this potential, inside this potential. It can't, if I stretch it far enough, that um, I keep stretching and stretching and stretching, uh, I would eventually break that bond and then I no longer have a restoring force. And so I'm, I'm restricted to being inside that potential. And because my system is bound like this, that means that I am expecting that I will get um, quantized energy levels, right? So I expect quantized energy levels because there is a boundary condition that I need to satisfy. Luckily, someone has done all the work of solving this problem for us, so we can write down the solutions and then we can take a look at those solutions to see what they tell us about the quantum mechanical operate, uh, quantum mechanical harmonic oscillator. Um, but before we write down the solutions, let's talk a little bit about a really common trick that we use when we're solving big complicated equations like this. So typically what happens is we have a whole bunch of constants like h bar and k and mu that we're going to be carrying around with us all the time. And so what um, we typically do is gather all those together in a way that we can write the variable that we're um, looking for, so r in this case, as a dimensionless variable. So dimensionless meaning it has no units. So if we write that y is equal to k mu over h bar squared to the 1 fourth times r, we will end up with a uh, variable that has no units. And so that means that this, because r has units of length or meters, this has to have units of 1 over meters. So let's make sure that that's the case. So remember that our um, force constant is a force per unit distance, so it's newton per meter, and that um, the reduced mass has units of kilograms, and that h bar has units of joules times seconds. Let's note that a joule times a second is kilograms meters squared per second squared times seconds, which gives me kilograms meters squared per second. Now, combining all these units, um, my uh, units of k mu over h bar squared to the 1 fourth are going to be newtons per meter times kilograms divided by kilograms meters squared per second quantity squared, the whole thing to the one fourth power. And a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. And so I can write that this gives me kilograms 
meters per second squared divided by meters times kilograms divided by kilograms squared meters squared per, sorry, meters to the fourth per second squared. And then that whole thing is to the one fourth power. So combining um, like units, I have kilograms squared divided by second squared, second squared is in the denominator, and then down in the denominator, I have a kilogram squared, a meters to the fourth, and I have a one over one over a second squared, which puts a second squared in the numerator, all to the one fourth power. And so I can see that my kilogram squareds cancel, my second squareds cancel, and I'm left with the fourth root of meters to the fourth, which is just one over meters. And so y has units of one over meters times meters, which is no units because meters cancels with meters. So I'm gonna use this dimensionless variable y to do my solution. And what we find through a lot of fun uh, solving of differential equations is that our wave functions are quantized, and we're going to use v as the quantum number. So there are a set of solutions, psi sub v, that are a function of y, because I've changed my variable from r to y, that are equal to some normalization constant times some polynomial in y times e to the minus y squared over 2, where y is equal to k mu over h bar squared to the 1 fourth times r. So these Hermit polynomials, h, there's a whole set of them, and they depend on the quantum number v, are, um, for instance, h0 is just equal to 1. h1 is equal to 2y. h2 is equal to 4y squared minus 2. h3 is equal to 8y cubed minus 12y, and so forth and so on. So you can see that the order of the polynomial gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and remember that um, the highest the highest exponent is the order of the polynomial. So this is a zero order polynomial, v0. This is a first order polynomial, h1, v equals one. For v equals two, we have a second order polynomial. For v equals three, we have a third order polynomial. And so the order of the polynomial goes with the v quantum number. Notice also, or remember, that there will be v roots to each of these polynomials. So if you have a second order polynomial, you have a quadratic, you have two roots. There are two places where that polynomial equals zero. So remember the roots of a function are the um, values of y that give you zero. So all the values of y where you get a value of zero for the function are the roots. Um, there's another part to this function, that's this e to the minus y squared over 2, and this is just your familiar normal distribution or Gaussian function. So it looks like, I can't draw it very well, but it looks like that normal distribution. Um, so every one of these Hermit polynomials, every one of these polynomials is multiplied by a, a Gaussian distribution. Now, if we um, also write down what, we, what the energies, the eigenvalues for this solution are, we find that the eigenvalues, E sub V, are equal to V plus a half times omega sub E. Omega sub e is called the vibrational constant, and omega sub e is equal to h bar times the square root of k divided by mu. So that 
that vibrational constant is related to the force constant and the reduced mass.